Hi, welcome to the cottage. Today I want to talk a little bit about my first garden and some things I learned that I want to implement for my garden this year. And I thought it might be fun while I'm talking and filming this video to kind of plant my little succulents in these vintage tins that I've been picking up and collecting. If you've seen some previous videos, you'll see um, that I've been collecting these for sort of a little um, windowsill sill ledge garden above my sink there. And so I'm gonna just take some time today as I'm filming this video to do that planting. So I wanna tell you a little bit about um, how it took me so long to start my first garden. So when my husband and I got married, we bought a fixer upper. We've actually lived in four houses during our marriage and every single house we lived in, I had a different excuse as to why it was not the right time for a garden. And house number one um, basically was a fixer upper and we were always working on it. And so we really did not have the time and that really is kind of a good excuse. We were really busy. Um, our second house is where we brought home our babies and where we raised our toddlers and I always thought well What's the point of planting something if the kids are just going to destroy it? And so we didn't bother with a garden there and we lived there for 10 years Our third home was a rental and even though it was a farmhouse and we had all the space in the world to make a garden I didn't feel as connected to the property as I felt like I needed to be in order to plant a garden but when we moved here to Arrow Hill Cottage, which we believe is our forever home, we um, were very interested in starting a garden and I made it a goal of mine to start one. And so like many other people during the pandemic of 2020, I tried something new and that was to plant my very first garden. I tend to be the type of person who learns best by doing things and actually trying things and so, I didn't really know what to expect having never had a garden, but I jumped in feet first and tried it out. So I wanna tell you a little bit about what we did. So starting off, our setting is very wooded. We have um, a lot of mature oak trees around here and I wasn't sure how good of sunlight we would actually even get in our location to even have a garden. And so I spent the first um, month or so of spring, couple months of spring kind of tracking the sun patterns and I found that there was an area behind the garage that our garage has a low enough slope of a roof that um, it got pretty good sunlight. And so um, I decided to start there. So we took and we marked out about an eight by 10 foot area. Um, just, you know, I didn't want it to be too big since it was my first garden. I decided to only plant um, tomatoes and peppers because I heard that those were fairly easy to grow. And so I just got, um, I think it was about eight tomato plants and maybe, maybe eight pepper plants as well. And I started with that. Another issue that we knew we were up against was the deer population. And um, because of the wooded area and the nature of the woods, there are a lot of deer that come around and other wildlife. And so we knew we would have to compete with that. And so I definitely knew starting out that we would need to have some sort of fencing. And I didn't want to have anything too permanent because I wasn't sure that that location would work and I didn't want to just put in a lot of money into it, not knowing if I'd be able, able to grow anything anyway. And so I looked online and I found some simple um, deer resistant fence type situations. Uh, solutions and one of them was to use uh, heavy gauge fishing wire to make your border around your garden. And so we stuck some um, wooden posts into the corner, just some posts that my husband kind of made himself. They weren't anything we purchased. Um, we stuck those into the ground on the four corners of this garden and we used fishing wire every six inches from the base um, moving up all the way around. So we wrapped it all the way around the outside of the garden. And the theory with this is that the deer would kind of see that there's vegetables there or that there's produce there and they'd kind of go to, to get the produce, but that this, this wire or this fishing line would be invisible to them and they would kind of run up against it and it might spook them and that they wouldn't come back after that. So that's kind of the theory. There was a guy 
that I saw online that he had been using this method on his really large garden for many, many years and he had good success with it. And I liked the way that it looked. It looked um, very natural. You couldn't see it. Um, it was not very obstructive and it was very inexpensive. I think like $5 or something like that. And so I did like that. However, we did find out that partway through the season, the deer must have, I don't know, got smart enough or something. And one of them stuck its head through the six inches of the fishing wire and nibbled off the top of one of my tomato plants. So that was kind of a bummer, but considering how many deer we have around here, that was actually um, pretty successful that we only had the loss of one plant. However, I, I didn't want to lose any more. So when that happened, we did invest in a little bit more of a heavy gauge deer fence. And we just bought that at like our local um, farm fleet store. And that held up really well for the rest of the summer. I definitely had a desire for my garden to be pretty and I know that's kind of silly, especially when you're starting out with your very first garden, but it's just something that I figured if I was gonna be spending a lot of time out there, I just wanted it to be relaxing and inspirational to me. And so one of the projects I took on was making these um, tomato cages out of small branches. And this is something, again, I found inspiration for online. And um, they actually functioned pretty well. The only thing is I could only, I think I planted too many tomatoes around it and they got a little bit overwhelmed. If I had just used one of these for one or maybe two tomato plants, that probably would have been better. But I put one tomato plant at each corner and it sort of got overwhelmed. And so I think that that's something I'll definitely change for this year. I'll either make more of those or kind of have a different, um, different uh, setup for how I plant those tomatoes. But um, it did look pretty and it was something that was functional. Another tip that I read online was to use mulch at um, the base of your plants to kind of hold the water in and it sort of acted like a bowl. If you kind of form it in a bowl shape, you could pour um, the water or you know water them at the base and it would sort of fill this bowl of mulch and then slowly it would seep into the roots of the plant. And that actually worked really well. It also, I felt, kept the weeds down a bit. And so um, I'm definitely gonna be doing that again this year. We have our own mulcher machine thing and we have a lot of extra twigs and things from different um, outdoor projects that we've done. And so that is something that I will be continuing to do this year. Another thing that I learned um, a little bit late in the game last year was the fertilizing situation. And I did not fertilize very early on. I think I got to that pretty late. I think it was maybe mid-July before I actually started fertilizing. And um, my mother-in-law was saying that she fertilized like every, every week or every other week. And I had only been doing it maybe like once a month. And so I don't know if that stunted my growth a little bit. Maybe I didn't get as much harvest as I would have. So this year I'm going to try to really focus on doing that more often and starting to do that sooner. So I think overall my first year gardening experience was pretty successful. I told my husband that really I was just having the goal of growing something at all, something that we could eat. Um, and I was able to even share some of my produce with other people. So that kind of exceeded my expectations, which was kind of fun. Um, this year, I do have some bigger plans and different plans going forward. We have already cleared a larger area back behind the garage since now we know that it is a good area in terms of sunlight. And we have plans to actually create a terraced garden because our land does slope quite a bit back there. And so I'm currently working on these, um, these terraces that are made out of fallen sticks. And it's gonna be kind of a cool project that helps to use up some of our natural resources that we already have here. We also are going to add a more permanent um, deer fence with probably metal poles 
and a fence that we should be able to leave up for at least a few years. I'm also hoping to find a good spot back there for a composting tumbler this year and we haven't ever done composting either and so I want to get one of those stainless steel barrels that you can kind of turn and they make it pretty easy to use from what I've read and so that's something that I would like to also tackle this coming gardening season. The other thing about this year is I'm going to be trying to plant quite a few different crops and so last year like I said it was just tomatoes and peppers and this year I've got a whole host of other items that I want to try like carrots and radishes and cucumbers and once again I will have the goal to just create some things that we can eat from that and I don't expect to know everything about um, the planting of all of these different types of vegetables. I'm really only doing vegetables this year. Eventually it would be fun to add some fruits, but just starting with vegetables for now. So we're really looking forward to garden number two this year. My kids really enjoyed, especially the harvesting portion of the gardening season, just coming with me out there and searching for the ripe tomatoes and the peppers. And it will just be really fun to see all the different vegetables this year and to kind of keep an eye out for those as well. And um, it's just, I was really surprised again by how much I enjoyed it. Having never had a garden before, I was worried it might be a little stressful, but actually it was such a stress reliever because it was something that got me outside every day and it just got me into nature and it was just kind of a breath of fresh air, sort of a relaxing thing to do. And I really enjoyed it and I'm excited for year number two. Well, thanks so much for stopping by today as I planted my little succulents and we had a little time to chat about gardening. If you have any gardening tips or if you planted your first garden last year or maybe you're planting it this year, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Give me your best tips, give me your best tricks. I am such a beginner, but I am excited to learn this new hobby that I enjoy so much. Thanks so much for stopping by the cottage and I hope you'll stop by again really soon.